Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Maths 5th Grade, Module 9, Lesson 1. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can use an area model to multiply mixed numbers. And the learning objective says, use an area model to represent multiplication of mixed numbers. And then the prior learning is students represented the fraction A over B as the product of A and 1 over B. Students use the understanding that a multiple of A over B is a multiple of 1 over B to multiply a fraction by a whole number. And students multiplied fractions by whole numbers using visual models and equations. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the lesson on page 217. We have a spark your learning word problem that reads, Mrs. Cruz wants to use square tiles to cover the front entryway of a house. Each tile she plans to use measures half a foot by half a foot. What is the area of the entryway? Okay, so she's using tiles, and they're square, perfectly square tiles where the length is half of a foot and the width is half of a foot. So we need to figure out how many total um, tiles are going to be using so that we can find the total area of her entryway. And if you look over at the picture of the right, her entryway is four and a half feet by three and a half feet. So what we want to do is we want to use this information to find out how many tiles there are going to be. So remember, each tile is a half foot by a half foot. So let's go ahead and start by with my length showing three and a half feet. So I have three and a half feet. So I need to know how many half measurement squares are gonna fit in my three and a half feet. So what I need to do is I need to turn this into an improper fraction to find out how many halves there are gonna be. So the way that I turn my three and a half into an improper fraction is I work my way up and I'm gonna do two times three and then add my numerator. So two times three is six plus one is seven. So I have seven halves. And then using my other measurement, four and a half, I need to figure out how many half pieces are gonna be going the other way. So use the same thing, turn it into an improper fraction. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. So what I just found out is using my tiles that are a half foot by a half foot, I know I have seven that'll fit this way and nine that'll fit this way. So I'm gonna use my area model to show that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count down seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's showing seven tiles where each tile is a half a foot. All right, so there is my seven. Then the other way I have nine. So remember my first tile is already there, so that's counting as one. So I'm gonna start counting the next one as two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there is my nine by my seven area model. So if you look up in the um, bold writing, it says draw a visual model to show how many tiles she will use. We did that, but we wanna be able to explain how we can use our visual model to find the area of the entryway, right? So first we need to figure out what is the total amount of tiles that I'm using? Well, if I know that my length was seven and my width was nine, and I know that area is length times width, nine times seven is 63. So I have a total of 63 tiles being used here. And I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little bit more room. So I know that each one tile is half by half. So what's the area of just one tile? Well, I have half by half, find the area length times width, that is gonna be one fourth. So the area of one little tile is one fourth of a foot. And I have 63 of these tiles total in my entryway. So I need to take my one fourth and I need to multiply it by 63. 
Now, if we were going to be multiplying this out, I would show it as 1 fourth times 63 over 1, because if I put any number over 1, it stays that value, but now it's a fraction. All right, so now I need to multiply. So multiply the numerators, 1 times 63 is 63, and 4 times 1 is 4. Now, I need, you can leave it at that, like that, it's perfectly acceptable answer. I don't like to leave my answers as improper fractions, so I wanna change them into a mixed number. So if I did four into 63, I know that I can do 15 fours to get me to 60. So 15 would be my whole number, getting me to 60 with only three left over. So my remainder is my new numerator, and I'm gonna keep my denominator four. All right, so let's go ahead and flip the page and go to page 218. I have number one, A, B, C, and D. And number one reads, Will replaces the tiles of a shower floor. The floor measures four and one-third feet by three and two-thirds feet. Will covers the floor with small square tiles. Each tile he uses is one-third foot by one-third foot. This problem is exactly the same as the problem that we did before, we're just using different numbers. But the way that you're going to solve it has the exact same steps. All right, and then for A, how many tiles cover the shower floor? And then how can you find the number of tiles without just counting them? For B, what is the area of just a tile? So one tile, let's find the area of that. And then C, how can you use the area of each tile to find the area of the entire shower floor. And then D, what is the area of the shower floor? All right, go ahead and try your best on these problems. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, great work. Let's go ahead and go through this. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over my problem just one more time to familiarize myself. It says the, the whole entire floor measures four and one third by three and two thirds. And I know that each tile is one third by one third. So we're doing the same thing here. We wanna figure out in my four and one third, how many one third pieces or how many tiles can I lay down? So I'm gonna be turning it into an improper fraction. Remember, start at your denominator and work your way up. Multiply and then add. So I have three times four is 12 plus one is 13. So I can lay 13 of the one third going this way. And then for my three and two thirds, start at my denominator, work my way up, multiply and then add. Three times three is nine, plus two is 11. So going the other way, I can fit 11 tiles. So let's go ahead and show that on our grid. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So going all the way down, I have 13 tiles going this way. Then going the other way, I would have 11. And remember, don't double count. I already have one laid down, so I need to start counting at two here. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So here is my area model. I have 13 by 11. So let's go ahead and try to answer these questions. It says, A, how many tiles cover the shower floor? All right, so I did my area model, and I know the area is length times width. So 13 times 11 is 143. So I would have 143 tiles and then ask, how can you find the number of tiles without counting them? Once we start getting into these bigger numbers, we really don't wanna rely on counting each square. So we need to know that area equals length times width. So we can take our length and our width, multiply them together to find the total number of squares. So we would just say um, area equals length times width and that you multiplied them. All right, for B, it says, what is the area of each tile? So one tile, remember up in the problem, it says one third foot by one third foot. So I know, again, area is length times width, even if it's the same number. 
So I have one third by one third. If I multiplied my numerators, I'd have one times one, which is one. My denominators is three times three, which is nine. So I'd have one nine, one ninth of a foot uh, for the area. C, how can you use the area of each tile to find the area of the shower floor? Well, if I know the area of each tile is one ninth and I have a total of 143 tiles, I can just take my area of one tile and multiply it by my total amount that I have. And then D, what is the area of the shower floor? Now I need to actually solve. So if I did 1 ninth times my 143, and remember when we're dealing with fractions, we want to put that over 1. Multiply my numerator, so I have 1 times 143, which is just 143. And then my denominators is 9 and 1, so 9 times 1 is 9. And again, we could just leave it here or we can divide. So if we did 143 divided by 9, we would get 15 with 8 as my remainder. So remember that remainder becomes my numerator. And then I'm going to keep 9 as my denominator. So it would be 15 and 8 ninths. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems, and I'll see you back here for Module 9, Lesson 2.